So the lights came up on this movie and the whole audience was totally shook. In a way, I've not seen in a mainstream movie in a very, very long time. Let's get real to find out why. If you like this video, make sure to drop a thumbs up to support this channel. Thank you. Miles Morales catapults across the multiverse, where he encounters a team of spider people charged with protecting its very existence. When the heroes clash on how to handle a new threat, Miles must redefine what it means to be a hero. So Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse was not the Spider-Man movie that we wanted, but the one nonetheless that forced its way into an already crammed spider marketplace. The first movie was a real jolt to the system in terms of its freshness of perspective, style, tone, energy, pretty much everything. But it did feel like a complete story, and I think we all wondered if the inevitable continuation once it became a hit was more to do with Sony knowing that only Spidey was a license to print money. But that also has to be balanced out with the fact that the creators behind the first, Phil Lord and team, were coming back, have a penchant for doing their own outlandish thing, and were taking their sweet damn time to bring out the next one. All the things you ideally want to hear if a sequel's to be made. The story in a nutshell, but I don't know if this story fits into anything as small as a nutshell, to be honest. But basically, Miles is now fully doing his Spider-Man thing. And like every Spider-Man before him, is struggling to juggle all the facets that make up his 15-year-old life. His parents and studies being front and center of that. A in AP Physics. That's my little man. And a B in Spanish. What? Woo! Okay. The thing I noticed about this story straight off the bat is that you're very comfortable chilling in Miles' daily shenanigans with or without the suit. And in that sense, this really, at heart, is your quintessential Spider-Man story. Taking it all the way back, I grew up reading Spider-Man comics as a kid. Shout out to Big Man Colossus who introduced me to them as a 13 year old. The Peter Parker ones I mean, not the Miles Morales ones that came much much later. The thing about Spider-Man for me is that he was always far and away the most relatable character. In not just the Marvel Universe, but for my money, for superhero comics everywhere. He was a normal kid and anybody could be him. His problems? Not getting the girl, struggling to pay the rent, falling out with your best mates, struggling to balance commitments and generally losing at life are all our problems. It's perhaps the reason there have been so many movies in such a short space of time. The first Sam Raimi and Tobey Maguire one released in 2002. And between then and now, there have been two whole trilogies, as well as the two Andrew Garfield, Mark Webb movies, and bringing up the rear, the now two Spider-Verse Mars Morales movies thus far. That's a lot of Spider-Man. There's no way to say that greed wasn't really high. License to print money, anyone? But that we haven't reached anything like spider fatigue in more than the 20 plus years of Spidey on the screen, that all of them have felt emotionally resonant and constantly surprising, is really testament to just how perfect that Stan Lee, Steve Ditko creation truly is. And so yeah, bringing it back to Mars Morales in this current movie, it's your quintessential Spider-Man story, but if all three Spider series that had gone before ate themselves and mutated into something altogether more in every single way. I'm reticent to say more about how this movie plays out. Some things are better left unsaid. But what I will say is that when the credits finally rolled, the audience really were shook in a way that you just don't see very often. There was this buzz and we were all kind of rattled. It was almost like we were all holding our collective breath due to the tension and emotion of this picture and that the credits allowed us to excel. Finally. I will say that Gwen plays a huge part in this sequel. And this is now almost her story as much as it is Miles's. I'll also say that the genius of this film is that they were somehow able to operate on the micro, small, personal, honestly resonant yeah, actions and nice. emotions, and macro, just madness of scale and imagination, and a lot of spider people, all at the same time. Again, if I had to compare this movie's feelings wise, there are two movies my brain automatically jumps to. One being Back to the Future 2, and the other being Empire Strikes Back. And it's not lost on me that these are two of the most game-changing sequels popular culture has ever seen. There's a moment in time in Back to the Future 2 where my narrative GPS, based on all those other similar films I'd seen to that point, ceased to work. As there was no similar guide in place to where that movie was going. And I felt I was in uncharted narrative territory where I had no clue what was coming next. Similarly with Empire Strikes Back, there's a moment so bleak, our heroes defeated, that you wonder how the story, and us, can never recover from it, and are buoyed by the plethora of options the sequel must bring. Again, uncharted narrative territory. That's the absolute best thing I can say about this film. It feels exactly like that. Everything about this movie is on point. From the cast, Shamik Moore, 
Hayley Steinfeld, Oscar Isaac, Jake Johnson, Issa Rae, Brian Tyree Henry, and Luna Lauren Velez. To the music, this feels at times like a movie and an album rolled into one. To the animation, just wow. To most importantly of all, the direction. As pulling off something of this complexity whilst remaining fresh, ingenious and profound deserves all the praise. Superlatives like amazing and spectacular, see what I did there, come to mind. But taking it back to being sat in that cinema, sharing a movie like this is exactly why cinema will never die. Being transported and transformed all at the same time and amongst strangers is an experience so simple and yet so super powerful. And when it's done correctly, when all the cinematic ducks truly line up, it is powerful and you will remember it forever. I know it sounds like a lot, but for me, as well as the entirety of the audience I saw it with, this is one such movie. This is the hot ticket, folks. That great unicorn that doesn't come along too often. Go see this, and go see this ASAP. We are supposed to be the good guys. We are. A true must see. Enough said. Um, ultimately, uh, I thought part of the genius of this film was how something so unwieldy and complex, seemingly complex, was at all times mapped to something in the two main characters being Gwen Stacy and uh, especially Miles Morales. Throughout all of its complexity, it never lost track of what it was doing, of why it was doing what it was doing. And you are always with those two characters, uh, Miles particularly. You're also with uh, Miles' father and mother because, I mean, they're just, as supporting characters go in animation, they're about as good as it gets. Brian Tyree Henry's voice work is everything that it needs to be. It's one thing on the page, having someone kind of run the gambit of authoritative and sort of sure of themselves and also kind of goofy and lovable within all of that. It's another thing having that pop off the page and, and, and feeling it. As well as Luna Lauren Velez, who plays Rio Morales, are just A, the perfect sort of couple. You root for them, you root for the family as a unit. There are a couple of moments that she has that are so special, so, so personal, so small. Simply speeches, but maybe better executed than any bit of animation I've seen possibly ever, but certainly uh, in a long, long time. It really is that profound when it needs to be. I think it's a real feat of huge scale playing alongside personal tiny moments. I mean, I cannot stress that enough. It is a real monumental achievement and the, the rhythm that it creates, the soundtrack and the film being almost like pop art, as well as it being a cohesive structure, structural story is just so exciting for the possibilities of cinema. For me, the litmus test of a, of a truly great film, I'm thinking about films like Return of the Jedi, perhaps I'm thinking about certainly a film like Heat that just took my breath away in the cinema. That feeling that makes people want involuntarily to turn to each other to, to confirm whether what they just saw was as great as what they think they felt. This film was really something that you should rush out to the cinema and go see with your friends and uh, find a packed audience and indulge in it because um, it really is that much of a treat. I would love, genuinely love to hear your thoughts on this film actually. Did it hit you as much as it hit me? Maybe, just maybe it's all downhill from here uh, in regards to films because um, I don't see another film coming along that will be knocking this one off of its perch. That said, James Gunn talked about The Flash being one of the greatest superhero movies ever and so with that said I think it will be exciting to see two truly rated movies go head to head. We'll let you know all about that one. I'm excited to see that for sure. I've been Jay Bunting Johnson. Keep it real. Till next time. So as many of you know I'm also a filmmaker. Consider watching my stuff and sharing your thoughts. The episodes can be found here and probably here. We've made a little web series. Do check it out, share your thoughts and donate if you can. There's lots of giveaways and the link can be found below in the description.